Um, we're talking about marijuana legalization, particularly in the context of this kind of progressive, I think absolutely substantively correct critique of the way the war on drugs has been ha has been waged. Here's just marijuana arrest by administration from Nixon to Obama. And this is one of the things about the 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 war on drugs that it goes up and up and up, although through 2010, um, it's 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 down quite a bit in the Obama administration. Um, that's at the federal level, of course. But if you look at data at the local level, it just goes up and, and up and up. And I think one of the question is, are we going to see this, if this is the solution to the kind of disparate impacts that we've seen in the war on drugs, are we going to see in Colorado and in Washington um, this be the solution to that? Yeah, I'm not convinced. I think there are two important points to make uh, about the arrest. The first is, yes, 750,000 people a year uh, are arrested on marijuana possession charges, but very few of those people actually end up in prison. They're not sentenced, right? So fewer than 400 people are in state or federal prison right now for marijuana possession alone. Now, you can argue that's too many. It should be zero. But it, it's not the uh, prison clearing solution. Uh, let, me, let me just make one point about that, because I think this is an important thing to think about. And, and, and it comes out of some of the work. I was just talking to a friend of mine who's actually doing graduate work on this. It, 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 misdemeanor arrests and early arrests are a way of marking um, particularly this young point two. young African-American and Latino people. And that, right, so even if they don't end up in prison, right, you now, you bear the, the mark of the, of the criminal justice system right. and that can happen. So, so point two is, okay, so will... <laughs> I'm just taking your second point, I'm sorry. So will, will, will black and Latino uh, young people no longer bear this mark under legalization? Not evident to me that they will avoid arrest or avoid hassle by the police because... because it's still illegal if you're under 21. Most people smoke marijuana well before 21. Right, right. And, and secondly, it's illegal to smoke outdoors in both Colorado and Washington State. It will be. And, and we know that the consumption patterns in, in African-American communities are different from in white communities, right? Yeah. It's not the basement uh, uh, smoke session. It's, right. the, it's the stoop or it's the yeah. park. We don't right. have a basement. Right. And, and, as, and as Ma was pointing out, I mean, if you already have African-Americans taking, you know, smoking less marijuana, you know, relative to the population size, and we're still getting incarcerated, I guess my point I want to get it is that that's not going to end the problem of over incarceration for African Americans if you legalize all drugs because we get arrested for misdemeanor charges for standing outside our own yeah. you know, right. apartments right. and these types of things. The other big driver of marijuana arrests, even when legalization is here, is going to be the enforcement uh, busts, right? So you get pulled over, cops wants to, wants to hassle you, finds marijuana in the car, gives you, you know, sobriety tests, you go to jail anyway, or, uh, um, you know, like you're at a concert, you're outside, you're carrying slightly too much. I mean, the cops are still in the process of enforcing legalization, going to have a lot of discretion about who to bust. And let's remember, institutional memory and institutional reflexes here are incredibly important in any institution. Yeah. If you're a police officer, a 42-year-old police mm -hmm. officer, you've spent 15, 20 years busting people for marijuana. It's going to be a very weird thing uh, to turn on a dime. Extremely weird. I, so Although, are we pretending that cops don't smoke? <laughs> no, no, we should not pretend. That. So, so I think alcohol and marijuana are different. So they, they can, they're they instructive insofar as the ad, marijuana advocates have said, let's set up a system like alcohol. Right. We, should, we should make ideas. That was so, one of the explicit arguments. Right, right. right. So when you look at that, um, alcohol is responsible for a million more arrests a year than all drugs combined. Huh. 2.6 million arrests a year. So this idea that it's going to be no longer an issue yeah. doesn't make sense. Also, we've seen, again, how the alcohol industry has relentlessly targeted the inner city. When you look at liquor outlet density yes. in the inner city and in black and Hispanic communities versus white communities, there's no comparison. That's why you have these community action groups where their number one drug issue is alcohol, which right. is legal. Mm -hmm. So not going to solve our problems. Let's focus on health issues rather than legalize. Tony, you were saying uh, uh, about the way that the, the police are preparing for this. Was I? <laughs> well, no, you were saying that, that, I mean, how are the police preparing for this? Uh, well, in, in Washington, the police are trying to figure out um, what their policy will be on things such as uh, members of the force smoking. Uh, and they are waiting along with the legislators in Washington to find out what the market's going to look like. I love that the Liquor Control Board in Washington State is... Uh, allocating funds to hire a marijuana expert to come in and tell them, like, what is marijuana? Where do people currently buy it? Uh, so it's going to be an entertaining process. In Colorado, when they had something similar to set up their market, you had drum circles outside and then sort of business people in suits, like the sharks in the water coming in, and, like, the drum circle people were spitting on the business people. And like, <laughs> it's a, the, the social clashes that will develop uh, in the process of legalizing are going to be entertaining. Tony DeCobel from Newsweek and The Daily Beast, and Kevin Sabet, former senior advisor for the Obama Office of National Drug Control Policy. That was really, really enlightening conversation. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Chris. What you should know for the Newsweek ahead, coming up next.